Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, so my name is Manisha, and I will be taking the today's session on payroll. Uh, because payroll topic itself it's very vast. We'll be doing with the basic payroll. Okay. Uh, not we are not going to touch the statutory part. We'll be taking that in the further multiple. Um, there will be multiple sessions on payroll. So right now, uh, in today's session, we'll be just going through the basics of payroll. Okay. So moving further in the further sessions, we might have on ESI, gratuity, and uh, like bonus. There are multiple things. But the basic configuration of uh, what payroll is, how we can maintain and tally application, we'll be learning it today. So I hope everyone is comfortable in English. Can we continue the session in English language? OK. Yes, ma'am. OK. Uh, so, fine. so we'll start with this. Uh, is my screen visible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. So first, we'll come coming to the introduction part. Payroll management is by which uh, an employer manages the salary or wages of the employees. It includes salary, wages, allowances, deductions, and net pay net payables to the employees. It also deals with the generation of pay pay slips. So basically, payroll is like managing the salaries where an employer can manage their employees uh, salaries and wages in the tally application itself fine so whatever pay has to be given how much has to be given and how we can give it to them uh, like what are the basics of calculation can be set in the application itself so we'll be learning on that so it includes salary wages allowances deductions we can manage even deductions as well uh, and net payable to the employees it also deals with the generation of pay slips so even after generating the payroll, uh, like after passing the transactions and uh, processing it, we can even generate the pay slips from the tally application itself and provide it to the employees. Uh, Come, 19. Sorry. Company must deduct statutory deductions from employees and contribute it to uh, its part two. Pay these liabilities to government departments and file returns in prescribed format. So like income tax, TDS, gratuity, all these type of statutory uh, deductions, ESI, PF, uh, NPS. Uh, so uh, like am i audible now so may i know which was the last point i had uh, you like you had heard okay uh, thank you sir so yes so we were talking about the basic deductions and where net payables to the employees we can manage the net payables uh, like net payables in a sense like uh, the basic earnings of the employees can be managed in tally application itself along with that even the statutory part can also be managed the like esi pf nps uh, eps provident fund and uh, like ESI, all these can be managed in tally application itself, which is part of statutory contributions, which we'll be doing it further in the for, uh, further sessions. OK. So this, uh, like not only the deductions part from the, in the payroll part, not only the deductions, but also further its uh, reporting and filing process will also be managed in the application itself. So we'll go through some of the payroll terminologies. First is gross pay. Gross pay is also called as gross wages. It is the pay of the employee receives before deducting the taxes and other contributions. It includes added benefits such as commissions, vacation pay, and bonuses. Gross pay is usually the amount that is mentioned when the company makes an offer of employment. 
usually uh, the gross salary what we say which includes all the type of earnings will be included in the gross pay so whatever like the basic pays allowances hra all these will be added under the gross pay along with the additional benefits what the company is provided to the providing to the employees net pay must also be referred to a take home pay the actual amount of the paycheck is paid out to the employee after adding benefits and subscribing pay and uh, subtracting payroll deductions and taxes when someone refers to their annual pay it is the total of their net pay so usually what we are paying it on annual basis to the employee after making all the deductions from their gross salary so if you are having some earnings they are having some deductions as well it might be uh, like the statutory deductions or it might be the general like transportation charges whatever uh, i mean there are multiple deductions which can be deducted from the employee salary so after deducting all those and additional taxes like professional tax or tds after doing all these deductions whatever uh, the actual take home salary of the employee will be called as net pay cost to company that is ctc is the total amount of expenses an employer spends on an employee for a year it is calculating by adding salary to the cost of additional benefits uh, as employee receives during the year so let us try to understand this with the help of example so if an employee's salary is 5 lakh per year and the company pays an additional rupees 10000 for their health insurance the ctc is 5 lakh 10000 such benefits and privileges given apart from salary is included for ctc calculation so basically this cost to company calculation will be including all those information of uh, the employee like including their uh, gross pay plus net pay we can say i mean uh, their additional cost what the employee is actually earning plus additional benefits what co company is providing from their end so overall will be the ctc for the company So, anybody is having any doubts with this payroll terminologies? Fine. So, we'll move further. Payroll process. So, the very first step is to create employee masters. Next, payroll units, attendants or production types, pay heads, and defining salary. Then, payroll process. so let us have this uh, like we'll be doing this in the product right now okay uh please confirm if the screen is visible no yes ma'am yes the tally screen is visible right yes ma'am okay thank you so the very first step once you open a tally app, uh, like in the tally application you can see i have created a company as payroll company and i have not uh, created any type of entries we'll press f11 in f11 company features you have to tally enable not visible, to maintain for a tally screen is not visible ma'am then tally okay. screen is not visible just give me just give me a minute please is it visible now yes ma'am okay thank you so you have to enable the option of maintain payroll as yes we are not going to do the statutory part so i'll keep this option as no right now okay and accept after accepting when we click on create we are having multiple payroll masters if i click here on show more i'll also have the option of employee category here so this won't be visible directly by default you all are aware that in tally application by default will be having as primary cost category okay under which all the employees are going to get created now suppose if you are maintaining your accounts at one place and you have multiple branches like for suppose you are having one branch in bangalore and the other branch in kolkata you can create these categories in the name of the branches and later create uh, groups 
groups is whether this uh, this particular employee belongs to which department whether they are account from accounts department or hr department or from some other department or marketing or sales we can categorize the employees based on their departments through groups okay so we can do this employee group is used for uh, is used to categorize the employees based on their departments here we are going to next create the next process is to create a employee so we'll be first creating an employee from with the name as let me take chetan under i'm keeping it as primary because we don't have any group uh, primary is being reflected in case if we had any employee group it would get listed here accounts department hr department as mentioned earlier so that would get reflected here i am taking it under primary date of joining we have to give here the from which date the employee is joining in the company so let me take it as first april 2023 itself further we are having the option to define the salary details so right now i'll keep this no coming to the other information if we see employee number so basically this is their um, employee id we can say right employee number in the company so let me take designation hello ma'am hello ma'am can you make the date of joining in the middle of the month yeah, if it sure. is first april 2023 i don't want that i want in middle of the month and i need to know uh, how it will process uh, the payroll uh, is this okay 15th april yeah fine so define salary details we'll give it later after creating the pay heads employee function uh, from basically like their designation as an accountant date of birth blood group all these uh, things we can give address phone number etc in case if you are giving the bank details of the employee you can give it here their account number ifsc code bank name and which branch they belong to and these are the other statutory information related to their pan card uh, un number so pf account number all these information will be mentioned here so right now i'm keeping this blank and i'm just accepting we have created employee next is units of work so here we can create in case if they are doing overtime uh, if it is happening on production basis we have to mention them in uh, hours basis or days basis on that basis it usually it is done hours uh, or units how much they are producing if it is uh, like usually it happens in a manufacturing company where if they are maintaining the employees they have to do it either on how much hours they are working on that basis or else on um, the number of units produced so if you are doing it in pieces or you are doing it on hours you can create it attendance or production type we'll give here present either we can keep it as present and absent so this is attendance or leave with pay so we are having in list of attendance type we are having four types attendance or leave with pay is respect uh, is with respect to present or we can say paid leave okay leave without pay is for absent if they are, if you want to deduct their pay then for how many days you are deducting you can mention that so and production is based on the number of units produced or uh, whatever configurations you are doing on unit basis so on that basis you can do and next is user defined calendar type so you, this is, can be used in case of job work where people are uh, job work in a sense or on contractual basis the work is happening for a fixed number of days so in that scenario you can use this information uh, this particular section where you can mention it on project basis like for how many days they are working out of if it was 15 days project they have worked for 12 days so on that case on that basis you can mention for you under user defined calendar type okay
right now we are maintaining it for present so we'll, i will take it uh, i'll take it up and attendance or leave with pay except next we'll go to pay heads basic pay and it is earnings for employees it is fixed it will be variable only when it is on a uh, production basis okay in that scenario it will be on variable or else it will it is going to remain as fixed indirect expenses affect net salary yes name to be displayed in uh, pay slip basic pay use for calculation of gratuity no calculation type again we are having five different types of calculation the very first is as computed value so as computed value comes on the basis of uh, if you are doing if you are giving it on formula basis okay in that scenario you are going to use it as computed value if you take it on as user defined value where you are going to mention the values of that particular pay head while passing the voucher okay so while passing the voucher you are going to mention the user defined value in case if you are having any type of pay heads under user defined value you are first up supposed to pass the transaction of user defined value and then process the payroll usually in the payroll voucher the calculation happens on automatic basis so, hello muskan do you have anything to say okay uh, so let's continue here yeah or uh, if you are having any pay head where the calculation is happening on as on user defined value basis in that scenario what you are supposed to do is first process the pay heads which is having user defined value and then process it with and then process it further with the uh, salary process in which you are doing in which you have con configured you have done the configurations based on formula or based on pay heads so here we are going to take it on a uh, flat rate is where you are going to give a fixed amount on attendance it will be on pro, um, on the number of days present basis and on production base uh, will be based on the number of units produced or number of hours worked so here we are going to take it on attendance based on present list of period will be month again here we are having basis of calculation as per calendar period if we mention then for suppose april month is having 30 days based on 30 days it is going to uh, calculate uh, like the default uh, is having we are having of 26 days by default working days based on that the calculation will happen user define whatever number of days you are you are mentioning based on that it will happen and user define calendar type if you select then so in one month you are mentioning some other calendar in the other month you are mentioning some other calendar based on that it will happen so here we are going to select as per calendar period rounding method not applicable and accept i am going to accept this pay head so in case if you need to see the configurations once you can have a look so here this is earnings income types fixed under indirect expenses it is going to affect the net salary based on attendance the calculation is going to happen now based on the number of days they are present except then we are going to create a next that is hra house rent allowance it is also earnings for employees fixed indirect expenses this will be as computed value where we are going to give it on formula basis so this will be on specified formula when we see the methods of calculation either it will be on the current deductions total whatever total amount is been deducted it might be based on that or it might be based on total current earnings whatever the earnings of the employees is on current subtotal or on some uh, specified formula so we are going to go with specified formula add basic pay percentage it is going to be 20% on basic pay 
accept next is transportation allowance so let me take it as tran allowance this is also earnings for employees but this is fixed and this will be on flat rate calculation period on monthly basis except and the last we are having canteen deduction this is deduction from employees so this will be under income because it's a income for the company it will be coming under indirect incomes this will also be on flat rate basis on month and we are going to accept so if you go to payroll voucher type we are having attendance and we are having a uh, payroll but before processing with the transaction i'll go to employee and click we have to alter sorry if you go to alter you are having here multiple options one is define salary and the other one is employee either i can go to the employee and directly mention the and define the salary here which is effective from first uh, sorry from 15th april basic pay so we will be giving the basic pay of 10000 next hra transportation allowance 500 and canteen deduction 2000 okay so let me take it in this way and accept here when you alter the employee you are getting the option of date of resignation or retirement so this information we are supposed to mention once the employee is leaving the job not before that okay so this will be blank and once the employee is leaving the job you are supposed to mention the uh, date of retirement in case if they are retiring or if they are leaving the job you can mention the quit date we are going to accept this now let us move further with the vouchers first we have to pass attendance so usually as it is done on the end of the month so for april month i'll do it on may month uh, sorry in the month of april so here attendance uh, they were nick chetan mr chetan was present from 15th april to 30th april the it comes to 15 days 15 days he was present except next is payroll i'll create the bank account here so let's say mr chetan uh, we are giving the payroll so here there is a option on the right hand side you can see auto fill you are supposed to click on auto fill payroll auto fill and you select here salary from which month you are giving from uh, 1st april to 30th april for chetan we are paying employee name through bank so if you are paying it through bank it is coming the value is coming to 4500 which is for their 15 days salary based on the attendance what we have passed okay i'm going to accept this now the same thing if we do it for uh, the month for the entire month let us see what will be the salary of mr chetan so on 31st may
present for 30 days. So it's coming to 10,102.90. Except oh, sorry. Mm. one minute. I'll just change this to thirty one days. Yeah, now it's coming perfect ten thousand. 10,500 value is coming here with basic pay for 31 days. So based on the calendar month, it is calculating as the calculation we have given in the basic pay based on the calendar month. So May month is having 31 days. It is going to calculate the amount 10,500. So this is how we are going to pass the basic payroll vouchers. Anybody is having any doubts with this? Hi, Manisha. Uh, hi. Uh, actually, I have been using Tally for uh, payroll processing. And recently, I faced an issue uh, related to payhead. Okay, so uh, the concern was uh, suppose there is a cap of uh, PF uh, of rupees 1800 for a particular employee. Okay, but he has uh, not come for a full month. His attendance is uh, say for 15 days. Even in that case, it is calculating the entire month's PF. It is not according calculated according to the basic salary. Okay, so like what was the, I mean, in the PF pay head, it depends on what, uh, like the calculation basis, it might be calculating on the gross salary. Yeah, PF. the formula was if the basic is uh, greater than 15,000, then PF is capped to 1800. Right. But it is not attendance specific. It is still calculating 1800 even if the employee's attendance is for 15 days. Okay. Uh, so we might have to check once with the pay head and uh, all those information. Right now, we are uh, like we are not going to the statutory part. So we are continuing only with the basics. Okay, so how can so, bank concern be resolved? Ma'am, do not statutory. Sorry. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, do not statutory. Um, can you just show us how to co uh, configure such type of rules where there is some uh, limitation? Uh, maximum uh, amount should be limited to so much or something like that. So some uh, a bit complex rules. How do we configure that calculation? Can you please show us? Maybe some different allowance or something. OK, um, yeah, sure. So you want it with respect to statutory part itself, right? Or uh, like basically, basically here in your, if you see, I'll show you in this pay head itself. Okay. 
uh, like now you are having here the specified calculation on specified formula I've mentioned where I've taken basic pay. In case mm -hmm. if you want to mention some type of slabs, you can mention here greater amount greater than or up to. So here I'm taken basic pay on the entire amount. The calculation should happen on 20% basis. So mm -hmm. on the entire basic pay, it is going to calculate on 20%. OK, but if I want uh, if the basic pay is less than um, if it is up to 5000, it should calculate 20%. If it is more than 5000, I wanted to calculate at 25%. I can mention the slab here. OK, so then I can mention it either on percentage basis. So usually for professional tax, it happens that people mention it on value basis. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is uh, with respect to like what information you're giving here for the slab or for whatever calculation should happen that has to be given here. OK. OK. Yeah, so yeah. let us uh, like this is with respect to the attendance voucher where on attendance basis on what monthly basis the calculation is happening. Based on that itself, the payroll in the payroll uh, vouchers, the amount will get calculated. Now, if you want to see the other information related to this, we can go to the reports. Payroll reports. We are having all these reports here. So the very first is pay slip. For Chetan, if I want to see now pay slip, so this is how it is going to reflect control P preview. So this is how the pay slip will get printed in the uh, application. Now, some people have concern. They say that the present value it is showing as 31 days. I want even the, the absent to show. And the uh, calculation should happen based on the number of days uh, like after present minus absent. So actually, in tally, whenever the calculation is happening, it is only going to consider the present basis. Uh, so I hope you all are getting the point here. Like if the calculation is uh, suppose employee out of 31 days, he was present for 25 days and six days he was absent. OK, so you are supposed to uh, just to show it in the pay slip that he was absent for six days. You can mention uh, it in the attendance voucher. So what entry you are giving in the attendance voucher based on that the attendance, whether the employee is present or absent will be showing. OK, but uh, the calculation will happen only on present basis. So if you want to give the employee uh, like only on present basis, we have selected in the pay head so based on that only the calculation is going to happen. Even if you mention uh, 30 days present and four days absent, it is not going to do minus by itself. OK, like 30 minus 4, it is not going to do. It is going to calculate on the entire 30 days. So number of days the employee was actually present, you are supposed to mention in the attendance voucher. So this is how we can print the pay slip. Next, pay sheet. So here we can see for the all the employees will get listed here or the employee of, or, or the particular group for which you are seeing for uh, whichever employee group you are seeing you can see for that for this employee in so and so period how much amount is being given hello. period uh, hello ma'am uh, can you please show me another option for like to show present and absent is there any other options now we have shown oh. through like present on attendance basis for the basic pay now can right. you show me uh, how to do like through present and absent too okay um, so i'm going to create here um, another attendance or production type that is absent where it will be on under primary and it is leave without pay. Let me take it on 30th June basis. So here, hello. Sorry. 
please take that April one, okay? April because they have joined on fifteenth April. So how right. we will do on April month in present and absent too? So here Chetan was. Uh, let's say he was present for fifteen days. Uh, or else, like from thirtieth, from fifteenth to thirtieth April, it will be fifteen days. Out of that, he was present for um, twelve days and three days he was absent. So you are supposed to select here three days. The calculation of payroll will happen only on twelve days basis. Okay, the like the calculation you have to pass the voucher in this way. The calculation here in the payroll right now I have passed the transaction already, or else this calculation will happen on twelve days basis. So moving further, which if I go to the payroll reports, hello, uh, just a minute. So here you can see absent is showing three days, twelve days it is showing present. The same will be coming here in the print preview. I hope this clarifies your doubt. Hello. Hello. Uh, 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 sir, up. Uh, your voice is not audible. Sorry. Actually, sir, uh, right now we are taking with the only with the basic part, which is not including the statutory deductions like ESI, PF, gratuity, all these things. So these topics will be taken in the further sessions, on like in the continued uh, sessions on payroll. Sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, but your voice is not clear. Hello. Ha, hello. Uh, uh, is it possible to uh, set the salary on CTC basis? CTC basis, yeah. Like uh, now, whatever salary or setting, you have to just include mm. all the all the payments which is included to the employee earnings as well as deductions. So it is going to come total mm. overall. And for oh, the whatever uh, uh, profit and loss account, in profit and loss account, it will be coming under indirect expenses, right? Like the payheads and all are uh, under indirect expenses. So whenever you are doing the calculation, mm -hmm. now these uh, payheads we have created. So whatever you have taken under expenses will be coming under expenses, and the other rest in the mm -hmm. under the incomes. Uh, is it properly uh, uh, calculated? Okay. <laughs> Is there any uh, deductions? Yeah, so here deductions is only one deduction that is canteen deduction for rupees 2000, which is fixed. Okay. And uh, basic pay we are having at uh, 10,000. 10,000 is basic pay plus HRA is 20% of basic pay that is 2000 plus trans, uh, transportation mm. allowance 500. Hmm. This is total gross salary minus deduction is uh, 2000 canteen deduction. So 10,500 will be the value. Actual take home. Uh, my so, question is, uh, if, it is, if we set the uh, salary on a CTC basis, uh, okay. how it will be written uh, the um, salary def def defined salary? So actually uh, like yeah now if you means, consider uh, it means, uh, uh, yeah tell me oh yes so you can me. please complete your question okay um uh, 
okay if if i have uh, one employee have uh, 20 20000 per month ctc okay which includes basic hrd etc and uh, as trainings and also uh, the expenses like uh, canteen expense uh, and uh, other direction to catered direction uh, mm-hmm. how it uh, included in uh, included in 20000 So actually, I need to, uh, to I need to uh, calculate it based on the uh, percent or uh, if any uh, absent basis. Okay. So here, uh, like if your company, like CTC, on gross salary basis, right? Yes. Yes. Right. Okay. Uh, just a minute. Hello. 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 Uh, ma'am, can you explain with ESIPS calculation this in this period period? Sir, as mentioned earlier, this will be taken in the further sessions. So sorry, right now we are doing only with the. How can coming uh, the next session? कुछ पैसे देते हैं ताने ये तो मेरा आता ही है। हेलो मैम, मैम कैन यू प्लीज शो हाउ टू हैंडल दिस एरियस। आह सॉरी विथ रेस्पेक्ट तू। हेलो हेलो हाँ हेलो uh so first How coming to handle the... areas yeah are you okay areas what i'm going to do the next upcoming session i'll think of this in the bar so first coming to uh, gurdeep mr gurdeep question uh, with respect to calculation on ctc basis this will be taken up in the further session sir so we'll be showing you the process there okay and talking about the arrears so one minute madam hello 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 yes <coughs> hello hello sir your voice is audible madam can you uh, explain the payments so many payments